Hello and welcome to the Wayne Room podcast where today we are back to normal with me, Frankie and Paul going through 10 live races on ITV on Saturday with the third and final day of the July Cup meeting from Newmarket taking Stentis Age and also four races from York on John Smith's Cup Day and two races from Ascot. An absolutely action-packed weekend for us to get stuck into it. Frankie, like I just mentioned and we talked a bit off air it looks very, very tough, doesn't it? We're going to try our best, aren't we? Yeah, it's a tricky weekend finding winners. Um, hopefully those that we do find, because I'm sure there will be a couple in here between us, will be nice prices as a result of big fields, big handicaps, you know, horses that have taken each other on, and some that have run a, a dud at Ascot but might bounce back, hopefully. So there, there, there's got to be a few prices in there, but we have got to go and find them, haven't we? Yep, definitely. And, and like you said, I think it is a weekend for each way backers, isn't it? Bigger yeah. prices, uh, obviously extra places on offer. You go search around with different bookmakers. Uh, and Paul, this weekend is about getting yourself in front of the telly, watching all 10 races and just enjoying it, isn't it? Because it's going to be a right spectacle. Yeah, absolutely. No, big feel is great to see because we spend enough of the season both flat and over jumps, James, just complaining about, about small fields, which is it is a a worry, but this weekend we're, we're in for trees. Big fields, competitive handicaps, and yeah, we'll be hoping for a little bit of luck. Yep, and we've got a lot to get stuck into. So we're going to kick off uh, the podcast by looking at the first race on the afternoon on ITV, and it comes from Ascot, which is the Ascot Heritage Handicap over five furlongs. Uh, at the top of the market, we've got some old friends, Kings Lynn, six to one, Rohan, seven to one, Equal Actual, nine to one, and then you've got ten to one, bigger the rest with some other big names in there. Frankie, we'll start with you. Um, like I just mentioned, the top three in the market there are all horses that have run in group races throughout their time and now dropping into a handicap. So who are you going for to kick us off? Yeah, I've kind of got to stick with Kings Lynn here because he was almost, or I think I put him up as the nap of the day at Ascot. I thought he had a really, really good chance and I'd be furious if I didn't back him here and he, and he did go and win. Um, he didn't, he, he ran a good race at Ascot. It wasn't super impressive. He was ninth, but only three and a half lengths off the winner. I think this drop back to five is going to help him. Harry Davis on board is, again, another little plus in a handicap, taking off three pounds. I just think maybe Harry's got to just hold on to him as long as possible because this he travels really, really nicely. And then when asked, he does quicken, but there's really not a lot of fight in him. Um, even going back and watching him over five, but Chester, again, he was travelling the dream behind the winning in Fedora, did quicken, but couldn't quite get there, and the winner had a bit more fight. So I think the longer this horse can just be kind of kept a hold of and the better he can travel, he's got to look like the winner, you know, half a furlong out and be travelling the dream for me. But if he isn't, and there's every chance he will because he's he's talented, <clears throat> then I think he, he he deserves his shot. So, yeah, he was, he was a nap at Ascot. Um, and I'm hoping back to five, Harry can um, have another shot at it. Yeah, I, I thought you'd go for Kings Lynn, like you said. We are very forgiving on, on this uh, pod. So to kick us off in that way, that's lovely stuff. And obviously it'd be a nice thing to ask Scott to have um, a Royal winner again. So yeah, um, yeah top of the market, Kings Lynn, six to one. Paul, have you a similar opinion or are you looking elsewhere? Because it is a big field, isn't it? Yeah, it is a big field. I'm looking elsewhere, James. Uh, just when you say we are forgiving, we're not that forgiving now. Equilaterals in there. I'm, going <laughs> <elsewhere>. <laughs> I'm not one to hold a grudge, but Equilateral can. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a look. He's eleven to one. I, it is a little bit of each way value, but I can see him running well. But again, finding one or two just a little bit too good. I've gone with with Harry Brown, top price fourteen to one. Three wins have all come on the all weather. Two of them at Lingfield over six furlongs. Has won over the Sif Five at Chelmsford. Likes to go forward and missed the kick. As missed the break at Ascot when last seen, and then we ended up at the at the head of affairs. So ultimately, used a lot of fuel to get there, having missed the break last time out over the five furlongs. In the end, finished nine to twenty six, but was only beaten around about six and a half lengths by the winner. I think if he gets away on terms here, he's top price fourteen to one, and I'd be happy to have a, a small each way wager on Harry Brown. Yeah, Harry Brown uh, at the Royal Meeting was one that was a, a bit a bit of a gamble, came for a, a lot of late money, but just didn't um, quite get the job done. But look, um, could do this time. Um, it, this is a race where you've just got to find an angle and stick with it because you could find one for a fair few of them. Um, and the one I've gone for is one we've mentioned throughout the season already that's underperformed, but hopefully he'll perform on Saturday. It's Zarzini. 
um, for David and Nicola Barron. Um, a horse last season that won off a mark of 99 and was placed in this event last season off a mark 104, finishing third of 20. Um, having slightly lost his way after that, he dropped down the handicap, although running to a better level this term, He's continued to drop down to what now looks a really, really lowly mark, I think, of 94. He started this term by finishing fifth of 13 at Musper over five furlongs. He then went to York, another competitive event, and finished midfield seventh of 14. He only finished oh, just over two lengths behind the winner that day, though. Um, last seen off the same mark as he races off on Saturday, when a length back in fourth of 20 in the Epsom Dash. Like I said... He's not running all that well without not running that badly. So when he comes into this, he comes into this ride 10 pounds lower than when finishing third. I just thought the way he's been going, he's been edging ever closer to the, the top of the pack. And I thought of a mark of 94, how low that is for a horse that was racing off 104 in this race last year. Um, I thought a double figure price, he, he could he could hit the frame. Like I said, mentioned at the top of the show, You've got to search around with your bookmakers this weekend because there will be a lot of extra places on offer. So Zarzini um, to kickstart for me. Right, moving over to York then for, the, for their opener on ITV on Saturday. And it sees the John Smith's racing handicap over a mile. And it sees another uh, competitive field go to post, uh, Paul, with a lot of horses um, we've already seen this season, a lot of horses we've seen over the seasons. But who takes your fancy in this one? I want to take a chance on Aramek for William Haggis. And, and Samar Kwan's little mileage on the clock has, has had the eight starts in total. Was a good four to ten at Newbury. That was back in September 2021. Has only had the has only had three starts since then. Missed all of 2022. So it was obviously had, had his issues. But has been running well this season without getting his head in front. Was last seen finishing a good third of, of 13 at Sandown back on, on the 8th of July. And um, yeah, I think Aramay, I've seen seven to one, top price right, seven to one. I'd be happy to get involved there. Yeah, Haggis has got a few running all over the place, so it could be a good day for him. And at seven to one, that's a nice price. Um, Frankie, who do you like in this one? Eileen Dub, um, who's a experienced mile handicapper. Um, my only worry really is the marker ninety six. It's a career high mark, and as a result of winning, I thought quite nicely at Hamilton last time out. But I, I do think that she can maybe go and, and still win this. She's won at York twice before. Um, as I said, she's pretty straightforward. She goes on any sort of ground. You know, she's raced from off the page. She's raced from the front. Um, proper tough miler. The handicapper might have a hold of her at 96, but there's a one in here carrying 10-2. She carries 913. And with that York form, I always like York form. It's a weird track, isn't it, where some horses do and don't perform there. Um, that's another kind of tick in the box. So Eileen Dub to go back-to-back -back wins after... Um, being put up for winning last time at Hamilton. Yeah, he does like it around York, doesn't he? And course form, like you say, he's massive uh, on the nose, Meyer. Uh, and one I've stuck with that does like it around York is blue for you um, for David O'Meara. Um, he was in the form of his life in the middle of last season. Um, he was half a length second in this event last year before racing over the same course and distance a few weeks later. And he only just went down by a neck to Garley, who obviously we spoke about at the Royal Meeting. Um, sent to Glorious Goodwin in the Golden Mile handicap again. He settled for second, but that was behind Orban, who was in the form of his life then. Um, he finally got off the mark for the season, went back at York over a mile and winning the valuable Clipper Logistics handicap at the Ebor meeting off a mark of 96. Um, he struggled in two competitive events after that at Ascot, both at Ascot off a mark of 102. Um, and maybe the season was just catching up on him. He, he'd run a long, a lot of times in really competitive handicaps, and I can forgive him for his last two runs of the season. Um, returning to York over a mile this term, um, he got back to form with a close fifth of 16 in the Hamilton handicap off the same mark of 102. Uh, and then last seen at Ascot, um, he was 17th to 30 in the Royal Hunt Cup, but you can see a lot of hard luck stories in that race, and I think. It's tough for the Royal Hunt Cup because even sometimes the horses that have run really well can come out and blow out next time and horses that have blown out in that race can run well next time. So sometimes you've got to take the form with a pinch of salt, but it can work out and it, it, it can't. But he has been dropped £2 for that, which is the good thing. So he sees himself on a more feasible mark of 99 now. Um, he's only £3 higher when last seen winning over the, this course and distance. So blue for you. And with David O'Mara having a winner yesterday at Newmarket, Hopefully his yard is just about to hit a bit of form. So blue for you, back at York, six to one. 
Um, I think he's a fair bet in that straight in that race. Right then, Ascot's feature and their final race we're going to cover on I, on the ITV um, show uh, is the Group Two Summer Mile Stakes, and this looks a hot renewal um, this season. We've seen a lot of horses that have gone into this race that maybe aren't at their current prime, but this year there's a lot of horses that maybe just coming back to what could be their prime. You've got Master of the Seas eleven to four. Aldari four to one. Jimmy Hendrix in there off the back of his uh, win at Royal Ascot five to one. Mighty Ulysses coming back who could um, spring a big surprise. Angel Blur six to one. Regal Reality eight to one. New Kingdom sixteens. Classic Causeway twenty twos and Dashing Roger at the Rag of the Field at hundred to one. Um, Frankie, who takes your eye? Yeah, I mean, I could almost put up two here. I did like the way that Regal Reality won at Epsom. Um, quicker and nicely from off the pace. And that was nearly the selection. Um, but I'm going to go with Jimi Hendrix. And maybe I'll sway because, as we'll find out, I'm also fancying Sonny Liston. So if one of them can back up the form, then I hope they both can. Um, I backed Sonny Liston that day and actually bumped into one of the lads from Rafe Beckett's in the morning and uh, asked him what he thought. And he said, yeah, he's got a chance, but to be honest, Jimi Hendrix is a far better horse at home, and and you know he went and proved that. I think the way that he won wasn't just impressive for you know winning the race, but he had to go and do it on his own, didn't he? From on the far side, he had to just do his own thing and and go and win the race alone. And this is obviously a step up into a Group Two, but I wouldn't say it's the best Group Two. You know, there's a couple in there that have won a Group Three and a couple that have been in and out of form. So if there was a chance to go and win a Group Race for a horse in flying form off the back of a, a really good handicap win, then I think Jimi Hendrix has every chance. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix, 5-1 to one, um, for Rafe Beckett. And look, this is where it's tricky, this race, like I was mentioning. Master of the Seas is, has almost been there and done that, but he's thrown in a few blips. Aldari could be a Group Horse but hasn't really shown it yet this season. Mighty Ulysses was was showing he was a group horse in a handicap, but hasn't shown it this season. Like it's a lot of if, buts, and maybes in there. We just need to see mm -hmm. it. And Jimi Hendrix had shown it this season. Paul, are you in the same uh, boat as Frankie? Yeah, I am. Horse coming in here on the back of a good win. Has a good man, top man. Ross Ryan was on board, gassed him out as another top jock in Doug Costello. Um, comes here in good form. He's, he is a win either side of a, a poor run on the other track, the Roly Mile course at Newmarket when he ran just over race in the early stages. Um, I think if he settles here, which he should, you know, the, the edge is well and truly be knocked off him at this stage. I think 11 to 2 is a, a bit of value. I think the favourite, question marks over the favourite, Aldari, was was di disappointing, has to be said, I think, when a beaten favourite in a group three last time out. So at 11 to 2, I think Jimi Hendrix ticks a lot of boxes here. Well, I didn't think it would take us for the third race for us all to agree, but I'm glad <laughs> we are because I'm with Jimi Hendrix as well. And just for the simple fact of all of the others have got it to prove this season, and he hasn't. I know he's going into a group two from running in handicaps, but he's shown what level he can run at. He's rated under eleven now. Like that's not a handicap horse if you're running if you're running to a hundred to eleven if the the ratings are spot on. And I also think the way he ran in that Roland Cup, if you would have could probably compared it to let's say the Queen Anne or other mile races at the top level over that over the week. I don't think Jimi Hendrix would have been far away from a mm. lot of the pack. And I think maybe the owners were thinking, you know what, we probably should have given him a chance in one of the bigger group races. And now he does. And like you say, Frankie, this isn't the most competitive at this moment in time. It could be because if they all turned up, but they've got to turn up. Whereas Jimi Hendrix has done it already this season and a few times. And I think, like you say, Paul, 11 to 2 could be a very, very good price. It's just that little niggle, isn't it, that some of these approved at a group level. And he hasn't yet, but he hasn't had the chance because he's been running handicaps. So let's hope now trying at a, a group two level, he can go and um, go and land his group you two. You like to bump, bump up an, uh, an Ascot handicap as well, don't you? If you can win a, ha yeah. a handicap at the Royal Meeting, it's like a another step towards group level. Yeah, it was just it was the yeah. way he did it on his own as well. Like yeah. you didn't see many horses. I, I, when, I remember in that race as well. Was it Real World? that came out to be a group horse, and I think it was a few years ago, that went over the other side of the track and, and won that race. And it was in similar style, and, and Real Will went over and had a brilliant career after that. Jimi mm -hmm. Andrews can kick on now. I think it was a superb performance, and I'm glad he's got his chance in a race like this. And I think, what, 11-2 to two to find out if he can mix it with them, I think it's a fair price. So, yeah, Jimi Hendrix for all of us, and 
quite strong opinions. Um, back over to York then, and another classy event we're going to get stuck into is the listed city wall stakes over five furlongs. And this has attracted a decent field to post this season. Regional, who can't stop winning at the top of the market, five to two. Silky Wilkie, an old friend of Paul's, nine to two. Queen Me, six to one. Great State, eight to one, and ten to one, bigger the rest. Um, Paul, obviously I mentioned Silky Wilkie in there. Are you sticking with him or are you siding with someone else? I've I've gone elsewhere. Silky Wilkie was a good second at the last time out. I've gone with Regional, who, who broke the hearts of, of Equilateral when last <laughs> seen. <laughs> uh, putting the boot in the head now this morning. But uh, no, look at Regional, a sprinter. When a sprinter hits form, you know, a bit like the Phillies, when sprinters hit form, there's very little you have to do at home with them. Just keep them ticking over. He's a horse. He's won his last two. Like his turn of foot in the closing stage of last time out was, was exceptional. He came from nowhere. I thought I thought the race was I thought Equilateral was home and hose at Hayd up last time out and he just burst out of the pack. He was a good winner at York the time before and top price seven to two. I think regional has every chance here of uh, it is competitive, but I think regional has every chance to make from the completing the hat trick here. Yeah, super quick horse that just absolutely pings the lids, doesn't he? Um, which makes a sprinter's life so much easier. So regionals definitely got a big chance. Frankie, you have the same opinion, or have you looked for value elsewhere? I wouldn't say value as such. I, I did find the top two very hard to split, and I, to be honest, I could easily back regional as well. I'm going to go with Silky Wilkie. Um, I just think this is quite a nice race for him. He, you know, he's been tried in those sort of group three type races and and been fifth or, or fourth maybe at best in a group three. Um and then recently was second in the dash, which we know how quick that is, um, and carrying top weight, and didn't really get the best of runs when it mattered. So there was a lot that went against him, and he still managed to finish second in, in a really good five furlong sprint. So this listed race, um, although regional is definitely on the rise, and that's kind of why I nearly went with regional, I think it just... It's that in between level. We're talking about handicaps and group races. This listed race could be a, a nice one for him to go and score in. So it's silky wilky, but... I think I think the winner comes from the top two. Yeah, I, I respect regional. I respect Silky Wilkie, but I'm going to stick with an old mate of mine. I put him up last time. He didn't get the job done. I'm going to give him one last chance. And that's great state uh, at eight to one. Um, but this is his last chance. But he's sort of earned um, a, a bit of stuff with me because winning three times on the trot uh, and they were superb performances. Last time at Sandown, uh, I still think he, he ran a really, really good race. So I, I'm going to give him one last chance. I think what he's done progressing through the listed ranks, especially when he stepped into listed company um, at York in the West Doe Stakes, he, be he beat some really established sprinters that day. Uh, and I thought he had any amount in hand. And that was on quick ground. He was then sent off favourite, like I said, in the listed scurry stakes at Sandown. He finished third or sixth. Don't think he was far beyond the winner. He's carrying top weight that day. He was giving weight to the other two that finished ahead of him. He's getting back to a course and distance where he was last seen winning at. He's getting weight off his top two rivals in the market. I just think there's a little bit of di differential from his run at Sandown to what he has now back at York. And like we were mentioning him when, in the first race at York, this is a track where you need horses that have run well at before. Uh, and Great State took to it really well uh, to start to go. So uh, eight to one, I'm going to play him. And he'd probably be from an each-way perspective because, like I said, last time he ran a good race with just with just getting beat. So, yeah, top two in the market, very, very good. I think regional, probably more tough to beat with how he just absolutely flies out the stalls and he's on a bit of a run at the moment. But great stay at eight to one. I think it's good each-way value in that one. Um, moving on to the first then at New Market, we're going to cover uh, first on day three of the July Cup meeting on ITV. And they... Uh, kick off with the bet 365 mile handicap um a really really tricky one to get us going havana blue at the top of the market nine to two taff Reach, five to one for william haggis royal dubai 11 to two quantum impact six to one sniper's eye eight to one uh high bank 11 to one and then 12 to one bigger the rest um frankie very very tough i found it um who did you land on yeah i'd probably have two stabs at this um Tafridge gets the nod near the top of the market, who was progressing nicely um, over seven furlongs and then stepped up to the mile for the first time last time out. And I know it was a lesser race than this, but God, he was traveling so, so smoothly. And to be honest, I think I probably could have won, 
cosier, but the, the horse drifted across slightly. So Dana O'Neill had to just make sure that he won. And and probably in hindsight, which is that he didn't win uh, quite as as easy or, or by as many lengths anyway, because obviously he comes into another handicap here. But he did it so impressive. He's obviously got a lot in hand. And just the way that he travelled over, over the mile, I think it was his biggest asset. One that is worth a mention, I think, is High Bank. And we know how poor Appleby was uh, runners were going at Ascot. Prior to that, he did run in some half decent races um, over in Maidan, and he has been eased in the waist slightly from performing poorly at Ascot. So, um, if you can kind of draw a line through that Charlie Appleby Ascot form, I think he does still have a, a chance in a race like this. So, tough for each gets the nod, but I'd, I'd probably have a few quid each way on high bank. Yeah, in these type of races, you can have two darts, really, can't you? Because the, the field's so vast and you can make cases for so many. So it's not bad to split stakes and go each way. Um, so Tafridge and Hollow Bank, good mentions there. Um, Paul, who did you land on in this one? I've gone with, with Tafridge as well. Um, I think the favourite is, is interesting. I think the favourite's only getting the hang of things. Whether, whether Havana Blue will get the mile, I'm not so sure. Last two wins... Have, have come over seven furlongs, was a winner on the other course at, at Newmarket two starts ago and kind of ran in snatches. You wouldn't think he'd a, he was a horse that had a, a couple of runs. He was on and off the bridle and in the, in the end, he did it quite well. Now, his last run here on the July course over seven furlongs, he was just a little bit keen in the early stages. Again, when push came to shove, I thought he was a little bit flat-footed when, when he was first asked to, to quicken. Ryan Moore takes over here. He is interesting. But if he races as clean as he, as he did, he, he wasn't overly keen, but he was a little heavy-headed. He might just struggle to stay the mile. I do like Tafriz for all the, the reasons Frankie mentions. He was a, a good winner last time out. He had a no luck in running at Chester the time before that. And I like the run in, in the... He was toward in a competitive handicap at Goodwood the time before that. And I think it was it was a little over. It was about 38 and a half grand to the winner. So that was a, a decent run. Um, three starts at a go at Goodwood and he backed all that up with his impressive win last time out so tough reach I'm seeing top price 5 to 1 I'd be happy enough with that Jim who's Adam Farrer on board for William Haggis yeah, tough rage was very uh, wouldn't very stylish he didn't need last time out can really see the case but <clears throat> I've gone for the one just um, above him in Royal Dubai um, really interesting runner for Marco Botti uh, you see he's been only been seen twice for the yard since moving over from Dubai um, he made his British debut at Chelmsford in Nobby Stakes under a penalty and giving almost a stone away to uh, the second place, Mub Hajar. Um, and he won by a neck, but he was giving so much weight away. And I just thought that was a really, really good performance. He'd last seen at Chester over seven and a half furlongs uh, on handicap debut. And he finished a really good second behind the Charles Hills um, Saxon King, who, who's a very, very good handicapper. Only been up two pounds for that, for that run. He just looks like a horse that's going to keep improving. We haven't seen uh, the ceiling to this horse at all. Um, so Royal Dubai, I thought, was really, really, really interesting, 11 to 2. And another one that took my eye was Sniper's Eye for David Sincock. This is a horse, though, that will probably not run. So I'll make a case. So if he does run, um, obviously, 8 to 1, I think he's good each way value. But he is entered at Ascot on Friday. We're recording Friday morning. He's entered on uh, Ascot on Friday, so he could be switched to here. And if he is, I think he's worth taking notice of. He's been seen three times today um, for the yard, making his debut in January and fourth at Walls over nine and a half furlongs. That looks a really decent event. It was up to mile one, mile two at Newmarket, bumped into the likes of Davideo. I know he didn't, Davideo didn't run very well at Royal Ascot, but the tactics on him that day were were just stupid. I thought just blew out at the front. So, but Davideo I think is a nice sort. Vaguely Royal was in there as well. And he finished back and forth again, but he showed a really good attitude. Wasn't didn't didn't get beat that far. Last seen um, when improving for the drop back to a mile. Um, he finished a good second behind uh, Imperial Emperor, who ran on Thursday. Imperial Emperor probably didn't perform to the best, but he was he's been bumped up to Group Two company. So they obviously think a lot of that horse. He's making his handicap debut here for Mark of eighty nine. I think that could be lenient. And we know what David Simcock horses are like when they get put into the handicap sphere. That's when they really start to perform. So I think Sniper's Eye, uh, eight to one, if going here, um, has got a really, really good chance. But in the Ascot race, I think he's about 72 as well. And I think he's got a good chance there. So just have a watch out for where that horse is running. But yeah, Sniper's Eye, eight to one, but Royal Dubai will be my first choice, uh, 11 to two. 
Um, another big handicapper on the on the day at York is the John Smith's Cup. That is arguably the toughest punted event of the afternoon. Um, Paul, you could go up and down the field all day and either make a, a case for or against at the same time. So who do you like in this one? I'm going to stick with a horse. I think I flagged up each way in the race last year and threw in a, a bit of a stick for certain lads. Currently top price 25 to 1. You are going to have to shop around for extra places. There is one firm offer in seven places if you are having an each way bet. Certain lad, is, he's just the type of horse that could throw up a, a decent run here. George Bass takes the bounce. He was disappointing finish. Only beat three home at, at Ascot when last seen. Prior to that, he was a good third and nine at Chester. His run at Haydock in a group three at the end of last season was good. He finished third of ten in that group three, won by Anne Matt. He was only beaten a little over four legs by the winner. Like I said, he, he threw in a stinker in this race the time before that. But like I said, he's top price 25 to one. He would have the credentials to outrun those odds if putting his best foot forward. He's drawn a stall nine and George Bass claims three off nine stall nine. Yeah, big big price. Obviously, backed him for forty to one already. I think twenty to twenty fives, and like you said, with with one firm offering seven places, um, could definitely hit the fray in there. Frankie, I think you mentioned who you're going for, didn't you? Yeah, twenty two runners, and we'll have the <laughs> left the eight to one favorite. The winner. <laughs> <laughs> it's the winner. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm hoping both those horses run to form. And and look, Sonny Liston threw in a few stinkers before Ascot, but there was talent in there, and that's why I fancied him. Um, Ascot, 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 because I knew you know if he ran to his best form, then that there is a good run in, and he showed that, and he was only beaten by a horse that we're all talking about that could go and win a group two. So, um, I think that he's you know he's got every right to be the favourite for this big field, and hopefully he can go one better than he did at Ascot. There's there's so many in here, so there's worth mentioning another. Um, I'm not going miles down the field to be honest. It's not nothing too exotic, but no bow is quite fascinating. I think with only five starts, uh, another horse that throws in a few stinkers did it at Newmarket when ran a bit too keen and then just stopped very quickly. Went off favourite uh, at York and again travelled and then just kind of stopped and then went off favourite again on the all weather and won. So I don't know whether this horse just needs to settle better or whether it was York, whether it was the the, the firm ground that day, but. I feel like there's a good performance in this horse. Um, and he and he did look smart when winning on the all-weather last time out. He's just got to transfer it to the turf. Um, hopefully things go his way. Maybe having a few more runs this season now, he might settle better as well. So um, it's a horse that looks slightly raced and has thrown in some poor performances, but I think there is some talent there in Noble. So it's only listed in the selection at the top of the market, but Noble worth, a, a, again, a, a few quid each way. Yeah, two nice selections. You can definitely see him running well. Um I've had a stab at two here. I found this race really, really hard. But obviously, both from an each way perspective with a lot of places on offer. The first one is the Ed Dunlop train, Haunted Dream. Um, this horse has been seen to good effect on both his runs at one mile two. And I think off a of mark of 96, I think he's still feasibly treated. I'm, I'm not sure how close he's going to go to winning, but I think he can definitely hit the frame. And I think he's a really good each way bet. He was a winner at Chelmsford on seasonal debut off a mark of 94. He saw off the progressive uh, Simply Sondheim and City Streak, who were both going great guns at the time. He then went up to one mile four in the Duke of Edinburgh Stakes at Royal Ascot. And if you watch it back, for a long way, he was going well. He just didn't seem to stay the trip at one mile four. I think back at one mile two, uh, when last seen a week ago at Goodwood, he was just a narrow second to Lord Protector, giving weight away. Uh, and off the same mark of 96, I think we can see uh, another competitive run. So I thought he was interesting at 16s. Um, and Spirit Dancer, um, a, a shorter price at nine to one for Richard Farhey. Course and distance winner, loves racing at York. He's a shorter price, but he's a bit of a York specialist. And like we've mentioned a few times, that that's no harm on the Naismire, is he having a horse who loves it around here? Um, he, we arguably saw his best, best of his runs come on his last three starts, all coming at York over course and distance. Finished fourth of 22 behind Anne Mart um, in the John Smith's Cup handicap, only going down by a length off a mark of 92. He then went back to the track later that month um, in July and got back to winning ways of just one pound higher. Last seen in the Skybet finale um, handicap, he finished a good second, just bumping into the talented Phantom Flight for James Horton. 
a spirit dancer was giving him six pounds that day. So I thought that was a really, really good performance. Running off the same mark in 97 at York on seasonal debut. Over today's course and distance, he ran a screamer. If you look, he absolutely flew home. And he just finished a narrow third in what was a bunch finish. Um, and I thought that looked quite a good handicap. He's off the same mark again for this event. We know he performs well here. He's a bit fresher than most, having run for uh, 57 days. So spirit dancer at nines, I thought was a good each way alternative. What I will just put up, like, and just say, really, really interesting is Milbosk for William Haggis and Tom Marquand. 18 to 1 into 8 to 1 already. Um, riding at York, and he'll absolutely love every drop of rain that comes. If you look back through his form, he's run really, really well in France behind some nice horses. So a lot of money has come for Milbosk. So just having a watch out for that one um, for William Haggis. Right then, New Market's next event on the day is one of their bigger ones across the week with the Group 2 superlative stakes. Um, at the top of the market, we have the Aidan O'Brien trained City of Troy, who is very impressive on debut. Great truth for Charlie Appleby and William Buick, who was also very impressive at Leicester. Hartum, um, who ran well at Royal Ascot last time at 8-1 to one and 10-1 to one bigger the rest. Um, Paul, I think for me personally... You can look for some each way value, but I think the top two in the market might just be a class above these. But who are you going for? Yeah, if I was looking each way, that was at, at a bigger price, James. I'd probably go Iberian, top price 10 to 1. Ross Ryan for Charles Hills was a, a good winner on debut, but I was really taken by, by City of Troy on that debut success over the seven furlongs at the Curl. was written, written prominent throughout the tour that board had the benefit of race, race and experience, and he holds a a lot of big entries later on in the season. So, City of Troy, top price 13 to 8 for Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien. Yeah, when there's someone over, they don't normally get it wrong, especially in a race like this. So, City of Troy, it's an, it's an obvious case to make, and, he, and he, he's more than likely going to run a really, really good race. And like you say, it's the entries he's got. They obviously expect a lot of this horse. They've only just unleashed him with a lot of the season to go, with a lot of big races. So, City of Troy, 11 to 8, could become value by the time he runs. Um, Frankie, are you of the same opinion, or have you looked elsewhere? Uh, I agree, he was very impressive and could well go and win this. Depends on playing for places, because I couldn't really split. I, I find it hard, as it gets later on in the season, these horses, these young horses, and they've had one start, I find it hard to really kind of nail one down. You've got to take a chance, haven't you, really? Um, I find it slightly easier at the start of the season when you're looking towards Ascot and you've got the two-year-olds and they're racing the similar sort of races. But these, I mean, these can be anything. Um, so I'm kind of playing for places with one that I hope is a bit more consistent. Spanish Phoenix has had uh, three races already, was eighth um, in the Coventry. Um, only five lengths, I thought, ran a decent enough race. Again, look, one of these City of Troy or Great Truth is, is almost definitely going to be too good. But of 14s, I think for a horse that's had three starts, has run its race every time, looks to be pretty straightforward. Hopefully can pick up some some each way money. So Spanish Phoenix each way for me. Yeah, going for a bit of experience, which is not a bad thing in a race like this at all. Um, Paul, I'm taking you on. I'm going with great truth. I'm going with the good <laughs> old. one, two, three, lads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Seen once today in a novice stakes over seven furlongs at Leicester. And this is a race that Charlie Appleby has used for some of his best um, two-year-olds throughout the season. If you go and watch the race back, he was extremely green. But the further he went, the further he went, the more the penny started to drop. And he, he absolutely bolted it by five and a half lengths in the end when he got on a true path. Um, this is a race that Charlie Appleby has just made his own when he four the last seven renewals. And obviously only sending one in here with great truth is obviously his best of them. So... I know Aidan O'Brien, you've got to trust him when he sends one over, but it's in this race especially, you've got to trust Charlie Appleby as well. And I'm just going with Charlie Appleby um, this time because you're looking 11 to 8, 11 to 4. I'm going to take the 11 to 4. I think Great Truth and City of Troy are both going to go on and have really, really good careers. Um, but I think Great Truth might just take this one. I think 11 to 4 is a fair price. One I just want to have a give a little shout to him um, for each way money is Odyssey. Um, for Patrick Owens, if you saw his interview after Royal Ascot, it was absolutely brilliant. So, like raving about this horse, how good it was to finish third at Royal Ascot, and obviously the, the I think they supplemented him for for this race. So he's obviously going great guns at home. To think a lot of this horse, he's fourteen to one, and he could run into a place. So and it'd be great to see as well because he gave a great interview at Royal Ascot, and I'd love to see another uh, another funny interview. So yeah, Odyssey at fourteen is just one to watch out for. But great truth. 11 to 4 for, for a horse, by the way, to, uh, City of Troy. Yeah. Um, 
It's a good name. It is a, a, a good name. <laughs> to be fair, the amount of horses they have, you'd like to do yeah. the you right. <laughs> they've, they've had some great names over their time, haven't they? Yeah. So, yeah, um, very competitive. Uh, and we'll see some very smart two-year-olds come out the race. Um, New York's final event on Saturday uh, afternoon on ITV is the Group 3 John Smith Silver Cup over one mile six. Um, and for me, this looks a bit of a penalty kick for Hamish. Um, if he's on his A game, Frankie, he could be tough to beat. And I'm looking through the field and he, look, he's short at four to six. He's short for a reason. And I know he's a seven-year-old, but he showed last time that the fire still really does burn, doesn't it? Yeah, I think four to six is actually quite fair, if I'm honest. Um, he's he's a tough horse. I've seen him win at Chester twice. He's a big, strong horse. He's a, a brilliant stayer. Um, Tom's rode him plenty of times. He's won on him uh, two or three times. He's won at York on soft ground. He's won on, at York on good to firm ground. He's, you know, he's pretty straightforward. And, and like you said, it should be. I think a penalty kick and four to six. I honestly don't think it's the worst price in the world. Um, I'll be furious. Me and Paul would be furious if um, Tamusius Fox wins because he was napped last week. Uh, double figure price in a handicap with Harry Davis taking off three. So if he now goes and wins a group three, <laughs> uh, when we had him at double figures for a nice handicap last week, we'll be, we'll be furious, but he was a non-runner. So um, it's nice to see them take the chance here. But I think Hamish is, is really hard to beat. Yeah, four to six. He, he was even money, eight to 11. Now it's four to six. So the money's come for him. But um, Paul, <laughs> I think you might be sticking with your old mates. Maybe not to win, but to run a big race. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Smizius Fox in the, the each way of betting without Marcus. Currently, best price today to one was his, when his winning chance, he was well beaten at Ascot last time out. But when his winning chance had gone, Oshin. Just nursed them home. He looked after him. He didn't have an overly... He would have had a hard race in the earlier stages, but Oshin didn't give him a hard time of things once his winning chance had gone. I was really impressed by his win at Newmarket the time before that. He was... The mile and six, I'd, I'd be a little bit concerned. He's a winner over a mile and a half, but he was just a little bit keen at Newmarket. And you think, you know, he, he did well to find as much as he did. And I, I'm a stickler for that. I do mention it a lot when horses are keen in that... When a horse is, is over racing, it's like yourself when you're running. If you're running over a mile and you're doing too much in the first 200 yards, well, you're not going to finish the race out. You're not going to see the mile out and that you're using too much energy up in the early stages. And it's like that here with the horses. When a horse is fighting the jockey, they're all the time, they're not breathing correctly and they don't get into a rhythm. And ultimately, they're using up far too much energy in the early stages. Now, I don't think he's he's crazy keen, but he might just over-race here over the mile and six, where they will go that half stride slower. But if he settles and gets into a nice rhythm, eight to one, he might just run a nice race and, and nick a place. Yeah, he could definitely run on uh, and, and find a place, or with like you said, without the favourite market, because I think Hamish is so, so solid here. Like his price represents that, but... What all you wanted to see from a seven year old is that they've come out this season and they've shown they've still got it. And he did that by landing what the uh, group three Ormond stakes for a second year on the trot. He's a horse that's taken Kiprios close in an Irish St. Ledger like. And he, every time he runs, he runs well. Um, he's beaten Hookham in his time and Hookham's gone on to win. I just don't, I just don't see where he's run a bad race. Also, when he was a three year old. Off a mark of 92 and 98 in handicaps. He, he, he He's won over course and distance twice. I just don't think there's a chink in his armour at all. Like I said, his price suggests that. But yeah, for all the for all the reasons Frankie mentioned uh, and for what I've just added there, I think Hamish, it's a shame he's 46, he was even money. I tell you what, you'd be snapping that straight up because I think this is a really, really, I think it's one of the weakest races he's run in for a long, long time. And I just think he's, he's going to take all the beating, especially at a track he knows well. So keep it short and simple. Hamish just goes and wins this one. Um, I, I just can't take him on with anything. Um, the penultimate event on Saturday on ITV is the highly competitive Bet365 Bunbury Cup over seven furlongs. Uh, and like the John Smith's Cup at York, this is one that very rarely punters get on the right side of. Um, Paul... Who are you nailing your colours to? Because I, I think this is extremely tough again. Oh, this is a belter. This is to stick a pin gel, I think. <laughs> um, Anna, the, anything could win here. The, the one I've gone for again, just before I go on to the selection, there's plenty of extra places involved. There's seven, one fair offer in seven places. 
the one I've gone for his best price, 33 to 1, with a fair who's offering five places. And I've gone with a, an old, I wouldn't say reliable, but an old friend here in Accidental Agents. <laughs> who's, yeah, he's this guy in Region Racing Post. Um, <laughs> not, might, be much, might be much improvement in him, but he's, um, you know, he's a character. And I think on his best day, he's got a, a new rider on, which I think might just, you, you wouldn't know with these, with the characters, like a new rider, me and Nicholas claim seven off nine, so four. I don't think weight's going to be an issue. I think if he gets if he gets out on the right side of bed, breaks with the field on his best form, because he's a Royal Ascot winner back in his day, but he can ultimately throw in as bad a race as he can, as good a race. Like he was well held. He only beat a few home in at Ascot when last seen back on the twenty second of June. Some of his other races, like he was eleven to twenty two at Ascot prior to that in May, but eleven to twenty two, he was only beaten a little over eight lengths by the winner. Time before that, he was fifth of eight at Newmarket on the 5th of May, only beaten by two lengths by the winner. So on his best form, he's well capable of outrunning his odds of, of 33 to 1. And I'd be hoping that Accidental Agent gets out to the right side of bed on Saturday morning. Yeah, sticking with him, fair play. You put him up a few times and hopefully at a big price, he can run um, into the frame. Accidental Agent for Eve Johnson Horton. Um, Frankie, who did you go with? Because... Like we mentioned, it's such a, a horrible field, really, to really have a real strong fancy, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it's not a strong fancy, if I'm honest. I'm hoping Shining Blue at the top of the weights could just be maybe too good. Um, it'd be a good afternoon for Rob Hornby if he does go and win. If he if he wins before on Spanish Phoenix, it'd be two nice price winners for him. Um, so he's been through all as a, as a habit of of sticking in horses, you know, near the top of the weights or at the top of the weights and handicaps and getting them to perform well. Um, this horse ran a couple of good races over in May down and then won a seven furlong handicap at York carrying 10-2 that day, which was top weight. I thought that was a really impressive performance. Was just beaten last time over the mile in a listed race. Wasn't a bad performance, but I think back to seven, again in the handicap, again carrying top weight, but maybe once again too good for the field. So shining blue each way, um, I'd like to think we'll run a decent race. Yeah, top weight, like you said, Simon Soror in these, he's one you've got to look out for because he's a, a tricky customer and always throws one in. Um, I found this extremely hard, but the one I came down on, uh, and I'm giving another chance to, is Streets of Gold, um, another Eve Johnson horse and one. So Paul will be waving the flag for her with with two different horses. Um, I just thought I, I'm sort of following the money and just following his last few runs, sixteens, fourteens, tens into eights now, um, for this race. And if you look back to his juvenile career, when five straight races in a row, he picked up some serious prize money. And this is obviously a very valuable race. And he's been chucked into races like this before. And I know it was last season, but we know he can run well in these big fielded events. This season, however, he probably hasn't hit the same heights, but he's been in very, very difficult races. He was bumped up to seven furlongs and he ran in the um, the Greenham Stakes. On, like we said, it was very terrible ground that day. He finished sixth behind Isaac Shelby. Um, he was then sent to Epsom. And oh, no, I actually really fancied him that day, but Olivia Miralda ran an absolute cracker uh, and landed that race. He was only th just over three lengths behind the winner that day. And then at Ascot last time out, he ran an absolute cracker in the Group 3 jersey stakes behind Age of Kings and Zoology, finishing just over a length behind the pair. So he's been running in, I think, even though this is very, very competitive, he's been running in probably tougher races and now dropping into a handicap. Yes, he's off a marker 105, but... He's deserved that mark for, for the race he's been running in. And like I said, his juvenile form last season, if he, if he can just keep kicking on from that, I think, um, being a course and distance winner as well, I think he can run a really, really big race and hit the frame at eight to one. A bit of money's come for him already. I wouldn't be surprised if a bit more came. Um, Streets of gold. I think he's a very consistent performer and I think he will be again on Saturday. So I'll, I'll stick with him uh, at eight to one. Right, the final event from Newmarket. On this action-packed ITV show, um, sees the feature of the three-day meeting, the Group 1 July Cup, over six furlongs. Um, this is the race we've been waiting to talk about, isn't it? Shaquille at the top of the market, 15 to 8. Azur Blue for Michael Dodds, 7 to 2. Little Big Bear, we, we didn't know whether he was going to run or not, but he's in here, 4 to 1. Kim Ross, 9 to 2 for Rafe Beckett, William Butte taking the right. Cardam supplemented off the back of his win at Royal Ascot, 11 to 1. And then 33 to 1, bar those. Um, Frankie, this 
it's it's a it's a great win all of the race because there's a lot of top class sprinters in here. Um, you've also got you've almost got to weigh up like are you going to take recency bias? Do you think people are, the horses can come back and beat horses they they've took on already? It's a tough one from that perspective. So who, who are you line with? Yeah, it's a, it's a great race. This I know it's always a great race, the July Cup, but I think this is a particularly good race. And to be honest, I almost panicked when I started that to actually give a selection because I was just enjoying looking through the race and, and <laughs> I think I could have said five of these <laughs> and, I, and I thought you know oh god I need to I need to actually uh stick with one horse so my selection is going to be Shaquille but I, I don't know if that is actually the right choice in hindsight because at the prices he's you know he's short enough and, and planning could go and win this but Look, if he reproduces that form at Ascot, um, I th we've said before, I think that was arguably one of the performances of the week. And and for me, I'm still going on about Little Big Bear. What bumps it up is that I think Little Big Bear just did run his true race and Shaquille was that good that he could still go past him. I, I don't think you can make excuses for Little Big Bear that day. Everything went right for him and, and he ran his race and Shaquille was even better so he's a really really exciting horse Ross Ryan's uh, got the ride and he's a jockey riding with load of confidence at the moment which is a big plus in his big races so I think the favourite you know is, is the right favourite but there's there's plenty of chances and if I was to have a, a another you know in each way I think Cardem is is really exciting after winning the Platinum Jubilee um and you know, after Rob Hornby's won on Spanish Phoenix, and he's he's won the big handicap for Saints Row, my selections are all going in. He could go and win the July Cup for the second year in a row. So, um, that then would be my each way bet. Um, you know, you can't write off a horse that's just gone and won the Platinum Jubilee over six, but Shaquille backing that that up. Um, and actually, speaking to Rashid, who obviously unfortunately doesn't get the ride because um, he's on a ban at the moment, he was pretty good because. He he really liked this horse. Well, the thing is, obviously, it's tough for Oshie Murphy not taking the ride, but Ross Ryan, I think, is a great substitute to put bring in. I think he's an absolutely superb rider on Shaquille. Um, you, you've almost got to weigh up, Paul, because you look at the top of the market, Shaquille, three-year-old, Azul Blue, four-year-old, Little Big Bear, three-year-old, and then you move on to Kim Ross, Cardam, Art Power, six, seven-year-olds, it's almost, is it experience or are you going with the youth? So I'm going, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the youth, James. I think the, the jockey, Merry Go Round, I was listening yesterday. I think the owner had, well, Oshins can't ride it. James Doyle was in the, the, the running to get the ride. He can't ride. Um, then Ryan Moore didn't think Little Big Bear was going to turn up here. Aidan O'Brien said 50 50. He wasn't overly happy during the week. Ryan Moore was in for the ride on Shaquille. Declaration time. We see Ryan Moore next to, to Little Big Bear and, and Ross Ryan, who's ridden winners for, for the owner in the past, gets the, the ride of Shaquille. So, a fascinating contest. I, th I don't think Little Big Bear is the, the sexy horse in the race. He was a good winner at Haydock two starts ago. Like I said, I think Shaquille had, had his measure last time out. I think he confirmed that form here. I've gone with Azure Blue, who has a cracking record at Newmarket. As a, of course, this is winner, albeit in a Phillies handicap. Last year has a good record on the other course at Newmarket. Was a good winner over the Rolly Mile two starts back. Won a Group Two at York last time out. Like I said, with sprinters when we were talking, when I was talking about regional earlier, when when fillies come into form, it's very hard to get away from them until that they lose that winning or you know that good run sequence. And Azure Blue, she's she's won her last four. She comes in here in tremendous form. She's wrong at the weights, like a carry nine zone five. She probably would need to improve a little bit, but. Seven to two, a filly in great form. I've gone with a zero blue. Yeah, great record on Newmarket as well. Um, and Michael Dodds with his sprinters, he just the formula he uses with them is absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah, Azor Blue, I think I think she's respected massively. I, I love the horse. I think she's brilliant. And obviously beating Highfield Princess last time out, who's gone and ran well twice since. Um, Little Big Bear, I love him. Love Little Big Bear, but Aidan O'Brien has truly put me off this horse for this race because I don't think he pr should probably be running. I'm surprised they've chucked it in. But then on the flip side, would they chuck it in if it wasn't 100% right? You've got to look at it that way. You could be the getting... The only thing I'd maybe, maybe to give him a plus would just be that, that stiff uphill finish. He's mm. a strong and and powerful and he might just power up that, that incline, but yeah, there's, I think we would... There's, there's no way you would have been saying Little Big Bear 4-1 to one should kill 15-8, to eight, would you? You'd no way you've been saying that off the back of what, what they both did like last season. Mm -hmm. 
obviously Kim Ross is respected, but maybe on it on its comeback didn't look the same, but you can give it the benefit of the doubt. Cardam ran a great race last time, but I just I couldn't get over what Shaquille did last time. I just couldn't get over how he fell out the stalls, gave five lengths to an unbelievably rapid field of runners and still went on to win by a length and a quarter, beating the likes of Little Big Bear, who, like you said, Frankie, I don't think could have a proper better passage through. Um, Swing along, he, he's running at York, uh, Ocean Quest. There's a lot of good horses in there, Noble Style, Mischief Magic, Lazoo, all top-class sprinters that were demolished, really, and he gave them a five-length head start. So if he was to run to the same level and how he's progressed through the ranks this season, Shaquille, um, it's been nothing short of impressive. Like Desert Cop, Aesop Fables, Noble Style, he put them to shame at Newbury in the listed Carnarvon Stakes. But yeah, overall for me, it was just that race uh, in the Commonwealth Cup. I I rate Little Big Bear, the the best three-year-old sprinter. So if he's gone on to beat him, giving him five lengths, Shaquille surely is the best one to beat around. And getting weight, getting three pounds off Azor Blue, um, I think could just be the tipping point in this race. So Lucky is the favourite, 15 to 8. But Shaquille, for me, if he runs to anywhere near the same level that he did at Royal Ascot, and he could even improve. He could even improve. He's a three-year-old. He's, he's improving with every run. If he does improve, he, he could win this fairly comfortably. Um, I think it's youth that you've got to stick with uh, uh, over experience in this personally. Um, and I hope they show that. But Shaquille, for me, at the top of the market, I could ruin the mistake of, of of coming off Little Big Bear. Same with you, Frank, because I know you love that horse. But I know Brian's put me off that, and I'm going to go with um, Shaquille. Um, lads, an action-packed 10 races we've just gone through there. We can take a bit of a deep breath. But before we finish up, um, we're going to go for the naps now. So Newmarket, York, Ascot on Saturday on ITV. All we need is the naps. Paul, we'll start with you. Um, I've gone to York, 2 o'clock. I think Aramek um, has been running well without winning this season in three runs. Was a, it, We spoke about how important York form is. Is a York winner, albeit that was back in 2021. Aramek has missed all of 2022. Like I said, has been running well in defeat in three runs this season. Currently top priced at 7-1. to one. It's Aramek for a trainer who likes to have winners at York and William Haggis and Tom Marquand will be doing this year. Yeah, lovely stuff. Uh, Frankie, for you? Well, like you said, there's plenty of racing. You want to set up camp on the sofa, good bit of scran in front of you, maybe cup of tea, flick through all day. Let's try to start with a winner. Uh, the 145 Ascot, Kings Lynn. Well, I'm taking you on. Oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> um, my nappy's also in there. Zarzini, 11 to 1. Um, each way. Uh, like I mentioned, he, he he was third in the race off a of mark 104 last year. He runs off £10 lower here. He was fourth in the Epsom Dash last time, only a length behind the winners. Uh, I think 94 is too much of a lowly mark to leave him alone at 11 to 1. I think he could be a massive um, each way player. But it's nice, Frankie, it's nice taking each other on. And I know you love Kingsley, but out of all those 10 races, I can't believe we've napped against each other. But... <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Um, lads, thanks as always. Um, a really tough week, but a really great week of racing. And like you said, just sit in front of the sofa and just watch the action unfold because it's some absolutely superb um, racing on show. Please be sure to like this video, comment your naps or selections. Are you against any of us? Do you like what we've gone for? Let us know in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe to the Winners Enclosure channel so you get notified when our shows go live. All the best wherever you are back in this weekend and thanks for watching.